while we made it to Unit 7 FRQ3 from the AP Classroom Progress Checks, I'm Mr. Heinrich. Great to see you, AP Physics 1 students. Let's check out the system. A stiff, flexible metal strip is held in a fixed clamp and is able to bend in the horizontal direction as shown in Figure 1. When a horizontal force of magnitude F is applied to the free end of the strip, the end is displaced a distance D. As is the case with a spring, F and D are proportional. F equals KD, where K is a constant. Next paragraph. A group of students wish to experimentally determine the strip's spring constant K. They have a collection of small metal blocks of different known masses, as shown in the top view of figure 2. Right here, we can put the block on the end. Each block can be attached to the end of the metal strip, and they can be made to oscillate as the strip bends back and forth. The students do not have any way to measure force or mass, but fortunately, the mass of each block is written on the block. The weights of the blocks by themselves do not result in any measurable bending of the strip. So in part A, we need to describe an experimental procedure to collect data that would allow the students to determine the spring constant K of the metal strip by making a linear graph include steps necessary to reduce experimental uncertainty. And while we're at it, let's talk about B. For the data collected in the procedure from part A, describe how the students could create a linear graph and how that graph could be analyzed to determine K. So just thinking off the top of my head, I know I can't use Hooke's law. Hooke's law is F equals KD, and they just told me that I can't measure the force. So even though this has a K and I'm looking for K for my graph, I can't use this equation because I don't know force. Then you might think, hey, let's use energy. That should work. And at first thought, it seems to make sense. For instance, the block right now has elastic potential energy, one half K, which we're looking for, times the amplitude squared. And we could certainly measure the amplitude with a ruler. But when the block comes through equilibrium, that elastic potential energy turns into kinetic energy, one half MV squared. I do know my masses because it tells me each block has the mass written on it, but I don't know what that velocity is. I don't have a device that's gonna help me measure that velocity. So what other equation besides Hooke's law, F equals KX, and elastic potential energy, one half KA squared, which would equal kinetic energy, one half MV squared, what other situation involves a K, the spring constant? And we haven't talked about this one yet within these FRQs. It would be the period, capital T, the period of oscillation equals 2 pi times the square root of m over k. Let's go to the paper. So here's what our procedure looks like. Attach a known mass to the metal strip. Pull back the strip some set distance. This is a distance that you need to repeat for every single trial that we're about to do. And just to make sure they're not going to ding me for not being detailed enough, I'll say determine with a ruler and hold in place. Number two, synchronize the release of the strip block system while starting a stopwatch. Time 10 full oscillations. And a quick side note here, you don't want to just time one oscillation because there's a lot of error in trying to get a stopwatch to start and stop in such a short period of time. So if we're going to reduce experimental uncertainty, we need to time a lot more oscillations than just one. And I'll say here, repeat timing 10 oscillations multiple times. Again, I don't like getting into mathematics within the procedure, but I think this is something we should say. Average these trials and divide by 10 to obtain the time for one oscillation. By the way, that is the period. Okay, that's step two. Let's go to step three. Repeat steps one and two for all known masses available. And we're just telling the reader, hey, we know the masses, we know the period. We're gonna use this information in part B to graphically analyze in order to find K, the spring constant from the slope. Let's go to part B. So in part B, I'm just gonna start with our equation and then we'll make a statement based on that equation. And I'm gonna say knowing mass and the period for several trials, and now I'm gonna develop the equation that shows us what to graph. T equals two pi times the square root of M over K. Let's get k out of this square root by squaring both sides. Remember, you have to square that 2 and the pi, so you get 4 pi squared times m over k. 
And this statement should lead to this. And at this point, I hope you can see what I'm going for. I'm saying let's put t squared on the y-axis. Let's put m on the x-axis. And our slope then would involve a quantity from which we can find k, the spring constant. So I would show the reader exactly this visualization. And if you think they need just a little bit more, you could say vertical axis, which is the y-axis, plots t squared, which is in second squared. For the horizontal axis, we're going to plot mass, which is in kilograms. And from here, we'll just make a quick verbal statement. We'll say plotting t squared on the vertical axis and mass on the horizontal axis would produce a slope equal to 4 pi squared over k. Let's show them the math they want to see. Slope equals 4 pi squared over k. Solving for k, we would get k equals 4 pi squared over the slope. So that's pretty convincing. We just showed the reader that with the period squared and mass, we can get a slope, and from that slope, we can obtain our spring constant k. Awesome. Let's go to part C. All right, we're in it. Here we go. A second group of students want to determine the spring constant K2 for a second metal strip that is similar to the one shown in figure one. The students have a collection of small blocks of different known masses. The students also have a motion sensor that can measure both the maximum block speed and the amplitude of oscillations. The students conduct five experimental trials using the different blocks recording the oscillation amplitude and maximum block speed for each trial. The results of the experiment are shown in the table. And this is the same type of system. We have a strip that's going back and forth. Different mass blocks are put on here, and that's creating a different amplitude of oscillation, which you can see, and also a different maximum block speed as the block passes through equilibrium and starts swinging to the other extreme. So given this information, we know we have to create a graph, and from that graph, we will obtain a new spring constant value, K2. And that's what C1 says. For a graph that has the block mass MB on the horizontal axis and from the data collected by the students, indicate a measured or calculated quantity that can be plotted on the vertical axis right here in this column to yield a linear graph whose slope can be used to calculate an experimental value for K2. So as I looked ahead at this question, it would have been nice if they said we could put this mass on the vertical axis, but they're forcing us to put MB, the mass of the block, as it changes five times, on the horizontal axis. Now before when I was brainstorming with you about what to do for part A and B, and we talked about energy, this is the time to use energy. Look at this. We have the velocity. We have the mass of the block. That's enough to find kinetic energy right there. And we have the amplitude. So when we're thinking about elastic potential energy, one half K, the thing we're looking for, A squared, everything is covered except K, which we can get from the slope of our graph. Awesome. So to actually get C1 done, we're going to develop this equation first, and then we're going to do this part, which said if the quantity you indicated is not already provided in the table, use the remaining column in the table right here to record values of the quantity, label the column, and include units. Let's go to the paper. So this work here isn't officially C1, but it's helping me brainstorm for that last column. If I'm looking above, then this is the maximum amplitude away from equilibrium. I have elastic potential energy. I'll call it PE sub E. And when it swings back to equilibrium, we know that this energy has converted completely to kinetic energy. So these two mechanical energies are equal. So I'll say PE elastic equals KE, plugging in the quantity that goes with these energies, one half K. And this is K2, by the way, folks. A squared equals one half MV squared. You can see our halves would cross out and we're going to get K 2 a squared equals, let's call this mass capital M sub B, that's how they refer to it in the table, times V max squared, also how they refer to velocity in the table. Okay, looking at that, remember something, remember something, MB must be on the what axis? It must be on the X axis. So we need to kind of massage this equation to get it into this format of Y equals MX. All right, so I'm just going to put this thing right under here and see what we see. K2A squared 
equals, I'm going to write V max here for a second, squared times MB. And you can see I have my MB in the X place, so to speak, but my V max is not what I'm looking for from the slope. So I need to move that V max to the other side. Remember this slope should be directly related to K. So let's divide K over and divide V max squared over to the other side, which gives me that expression right there. Making this look a little bit nicer, since both of these are being squared, I could take the squared to the outside of a set of parentheses, just like that, which would equal one over K, again, times MB. So the Y equals MX is way up here. I'm gonna bring it back down to really illustrate my point. Y equals M times X. So what do we put on the vertical axis? We put A over V max, that entire term squared. Let's head back to the FRQ. Okay, and there is C1 all handled. We have our vertical axis, which is A over velocity squared, that term squared. We also put that up here at the top of our column, and the unit, believe it or not, is second squared. Think about it. Amplitude would be meters divided by meters per second. The meters would cancel out. You would multiply S to the top, and that S is being squared. So it is second squared. Now the next part is tricky. You have to watch out for AP doing this. They gave us our amplitude in millimeters. That means that this really isn't 0.82. This is 0 0.00082. This is 0 0.00061. So when you actually go to find these values that I have inputted, you need to do parentheses 0 0.00082 divided by 0.1874, close parenthesis, and then square the entire term. And that would give you 0 0.000019. In other words, 1.9 times 10 to the negative fifth. So all of these numbers are being expressed as easy numbers to graph. But remember, we need to tack on this times 10 to the negative fifth when we go on to find our slope in part D. Let's head over to C2 and graph this information. Okay, and there is C2 all set up. We have our axis scaled. I took my top y-axis value of 11.9, I divided that by 25, and I got 0.476, which is close to 0.5. So every one of these boxes is a 0 0.5. 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, all the way up to 12.5. My axis is measured in seconds squared, and remember any one of these values is times 10 to the negative fifth. Here, for reference sake, are my x-axis values and my y-axis values, and before I plot this data, check out the x-axis. Every box is a 0 0.01. 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, 0 0.04, 0 0.05. Now let's get our data plotted on the graph. All right, our data is all plotted. Let's go on to C3, which is to do our line of best fit. And there's our line of best fit. Looks pretty good. I have a perfect intersection point on the graph paper right there and also right there. Notice something though, I did not use the origin. The origin doesn't make physical sense in this scenario. If my mass is zero, that is to say the metal strip has no block on it and it would still oscillate, but it would still take some time for it to oscillate and thus second squared would have some value above zero even when mass was zero. All right, let's pick those intersection points and put some ordered pairs over here. Okay, there's my two selected points where the average line perfectly intersects the graph paper. This point is 0 0.07 and then 0 0.00005. And then this hollow circle indicates 0.16 and 0 0.00010. So I applied the 10 to the negative fifth to the y-axis values. Let's go to part D calculate the slope, and then get the spring constant from that slope. Okay, part D, time to find the slope. We have our ordered pairs. Remember, this has a unit of kilograms. This has a unit of seconds squared, and similar over here. Slope, M, equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And to save some time, I'm just going to do all the calculations and then show you the work. All right, there's our slope, 0 0.000556 seconds squared per kilograms. And remember, slope slope in this case was equal to 1 over k. That's what we determined earlier. So therefore, k, the spring constant, would equal 1 over that slope right there. Let's plug it in, get our answer, and be done.
And I get an answer of 1798.6, and this would be kilograms over second squared. Now, I'll explain how that's a newton per meter in just a second, but if you don't want to leave it like this, you could certainly just round it up and say 1800, and that would be fine also. That's our answer. Awesome. And I'll go ahead and put newtons per meter there. And if you want to see the unit analysis, check it out. If not, see you later. Have a great day. All right, what I'm going to do is kind of a reverse unit analysis. We know that K, spring constant, is measured in newtons per meter. So I'm going to go newtons per meter. And remember, a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared all over that meter. The meters cancel out. And look at that. You got kilograms per second squared being equivalent to newtons per meter. We're all done. Have a great day. Leave a comment if you have a question on this one or any of the other FRQs. The whole series is complete. I will talk to you in the near future. Have a great day and good luck studying. Like and subscribe. See you later.